You read that it fell. <laughs> Ignore my little packaging. I come packing crafting. Hello, my wicked vipers, and thank you so much for joining me here on Soul Stitch Hacks. That was a bit of a rocky intro, but here we are. So today I'm going to be doing a review of Kubo Won't Let Me Be Invisible, Volume 1. So I have found a new genre that I adore. And it is completely incapable of socializing introvert and extrovert. That's it. Just the couple. That's all. That's it. That's my genre. I found it. It's perfect. I found it with Kimi Nito Doke and a couple other ones. It's so cute. It's the perfect match. Nana, nah. It just writes itself. Okay, so Kubo Will Let Me Be Invisible is story and art by Nini Yukimori. And it's super cute. This is like the Kubo. Uh, yeah, this is Kubo. This is her, uh, he he, her buddy, Junka. He's like the main character, but he's not. It's funny. Okay, I'll explain. Junta Shiraishi blends into the background so much that even his classmates fail to spot him. His goal is to make the most of his high school years, but that pesky invisibility gets in the way until Nagisa Kubo notices him. Kubo's playful teasing kicks Shiraishi out of his comfort zone and begins a friendship. Or maybe something more. When Kubo sits next to Shiraishi in their first year of high school, Shiraishi's non-existent social skills get a boost. Speaking up in class is only the beginning for Shiraishi. Soon Kubo forces him to be noticed at school, at the bookstore, and all around town. Shiraishi's once last luster life isn't so dull anymore. And so this is a funny drawing of one of the things that happens. She intentionally sits on him because she intentionally pushes his buttons and tries to push him out of his comfort zone. And it's like she, it's almost like she's dating him, but he doesn't know he's dating because he doesn't know he's a person yet. It's really funny. It's so cute. It's so cute. But then she can't even push, push things too far because she gets embarrassed too. So it's just... Two completely embarrassed teenagers, too embarrassed to do anything, and one doesn't even know what's going on. It's great. It's hilarious. So it starts off with them being at school, and she's trying to make him say hello to her, which is a hard task because he doesn't really initiate conversation at all. But it moves forward into a bunch of cute little instances like, so... He's so invisible that when they took the class photo, even though he was in it, they didn't see him. So they photoshopped him in. So he's in it twice. Yep. That he's in it twice. He's so invisible that his classmates don't see him and have actually sat on him. Which, they have assigned seats, so I don't know how they're sitting on him. But they sit on him because they can't even see him. He's that invisible. He's not literally invisible, but he has one of those auras that's like, you can't see me. Like that. But not that loud. She intentionally sits on him for a brief second to see what it's like. And they're both so embarrassed from the whole incident. <clears throat> It'd be bad to draw attention right now, wouldn't it? Then you'd better blend into the background. Like, she is flirty. Like, I want to say she's fast, but I know she's not. Because I've, uh, I've been reading. She gets just as embarrassed about this as he is. I don't think I showed you anything. There you go. It's just so freaking cute and hilarious. So everyone's laughing. She's sitting on his lap, blushing beet red. I know this is in black and white and gray, but beet red. I see it in the drawing. Yep, just like I thought. They're none the wiser. And he's like, that's not the issue here. But will that last if you make any sounds? Oh my. <laughs> I'm getting like, ooh. <laughs> ooh. When I was reading this, I had to close the book. It was too much. I think I read these panels one at a time. Not like one at a time, but one. Close the book. Two. Close the book. Three. Till I finished it. It was so bad. It's so cute, but it's so funny. And so embarrassing. I get the secondhand embarrassment from them. Plus, 
it's just so intimate too so it's just like oh my god this isn't anything naughty like this is teens but he obviously likes her because he does talk about how cute her hair is how he likes every hairstyle she does how cute like how sweet she smells how soft she is when she's touched him how nice she is to him how she always takes time to consider him when no one else even notices him and it's just really sweet so this episode just kind of follows their date or this volume i keep saying episode this volume follows them in their day-to-day -day of like what they're doing like going to gym and she has her wet wipes and so she lets him borrow some and then she's very like it's kind of embarrassing she's like which this is a very real thing like this very attractive here they just called it on the nose i was blushing up a storm i'm like oh my god girl this is too much for me i need to go sit down you're doing too much you're doing too much i'm so embarrassed i'm so like flustered i don't even know how to function so she lets him he doesn't have anything to wipe down with and he's sweaty from the running track and she lets him use her wet wipes which smell like the ones she's used so they smell the same and she's like now you smell the same as me we match and then he just starts it's like he breaks down and now he has to contemplate life he has to contemplate life because he smells the same as this girl. Like, he is literally shooketh. You see him? He shooketh for an entire page. Can't even function. It's all done and over with. And so she keeps going. And then she thinks about it. And everyone's like, ooh, we see you blushing. Like, girl, what was happening? She's like, nothing. And they're like, let me use one of your body wipes, girl. And she's like, no, not today. I'm just feeling stingy today. Because she didn't want anyone else to smell like him. Because she's like, ooh. Would those have anything to do with the good mood? And she's like, of course not. <laughs> like, that face ain't full of nobody. Look at that face. It's full of no one. But it was so funny. And her friends are all like, you're so easy to read. And the other friend is like the, the token, like, lost friend who's like, I'm wanting to use one of the wipes. And she's like, girl, you're not using my wipes today because I want him to smell like me and nobody else, boo. I'm trying to get all up in that, clearly. So they run into each other at the store and they're shopping and she wants to find more common ground with him. So, like, she's talking about things. She wants him to... Uh, let her borrow uh, this manga he was reading that he's a big fan of and she's like well I can just go by your house today and he's like no and then they're walking home together and they find out they're basically neighbors like right down the street but basically neighbors which is kind of a big coincidence when you think about how big areas in Japan are how densely populated the cities are at least to my understanding well uh, they try to go but he gets locked out, so they have to go to her house. But he had fallen down in the mud, so he lets her borrow some, like, some sweats that she has in the house. She lets him shower, and she washes his laundry, and it's, like, super embarrassing. It's, like, super embarrassing, because she's being super cute. And then they're like, ah, my mom says she's gotten home. She did? Oh, good. Yeah. Shirashi, your hair's still wet. Dry it before you go. You don't want to catch a cold. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> and he's just like... System failure. <laughs> like he broke down. <laughs> I would too. <laughs> well, get home safe. Yep. See you. And everyone's blushing. And then like they're both like super blushing. He's walking home. Beat red. Not knowing what to do. And he's like, come on. Anybody would be hyper aware after something like that. Like, come on. And she's always pushing the boundaries with him. On one hand, like, 
on one hand, if I didn't have his point of view, I would feel it was inappropriate because she is invading his personal space without his uh, written or verbalized consent. On the other hand, I have his point of view and he likes her. He just has like negative 10 on his social skills and a negative 10 to per perception of his body. Um, he's practically a incorporeal being at this point. Um, and so, yeah, like, on one hand, I wanted to be like, this is inappropriate. But on the other hand, he is interested in her. And she's already pushing her own boundaries. So she's not going to go too far. So it's sweet, innocent childhood fun. And it's cute. It's cute. You could be offended if you weren't reading it and you didn't know that both of them are thinking about how much they like the other. He doesn't verbalize it quite as well, kind of like how uh, Sawako from Kimi Doke can't verbalize her feelings for anybody. It takes her like ages to understand, I like you. <laughs> but same difference. And then in here we have a big sis. Big sis to our little girl Kubo who's so cute and the big sis picks on her in token big sis fashion picking at her by wearing using her like fancy hair mist when she gets all dolled up and does her hair a different way tries cooking you know all these little things her sister is like mm -hmm, I see you girl you got you a man you looking at and she's like no stop it and she's just like Mm -hmm. you cute and then that same sister runs into him he was at a store way out in the middle and like nowhere near his home so because he wanted no one he knows to see him right because he wanted to try and like look at or buy a nudie magazine which has this girl who he commented uh looks a lot like Kubo, which I thought was really funny. The first thing he sees when he sees this naked woman with a somewhat, barely, but somewhat similar haircut, he immediately thinks, that looks like her. And then he blushes. Now, he wasn't going to actually buy it. He didn't even open it. He picked it up. And I think his embarrassment would have killed him. That or his wait for the cashier to recognize that he exists. Because he has never had any luck with getting a cashier or anybody to notice him. Like, the custodians will start flipping the chairs and realize he's in them. Like, it's bad. It's bad. The sister picks at him like, uh-huh. Sure you are. He says he came here to buy Young Jump. That it's supposed to be like a... I'll find the exact phrasing. So... He says he was going to get the new issue of the uh, Young Jump, but he found that other book, and he says he could, you know, take a look at it, get one or whatever, and that did not go to plan because she saw it, and she's like, I think you're a little young for this, and he feels so freaking embarrassed, and she's like the, the pervy older sister that people make fetishes out of, so it's kind of a bit weird. I don't like that, but, you know, and... He accidentally drops his ID. And so, when he drops his ID, the girl realizes, oh, the sister realizes, oh, hey, this is the same school my sister goes to. Hey, do you know this guy? And she's like, oh, my God, yes, I do. I'm not telling you this, but he's my crush. <laughs> so, she gives this to the sister, and the sister goes to give it back. And she's like, oh, my God, he was trying to buy a nudie mag. With this girl with these big bazongas on it. And the sister even does this. Like, big bazongas? I don't know what she, the word she said, but I'm going to go with that one. And you're just watching. You're like, oh my god. And now she feels so embarrassed. Because she has a very petite chest. She has a petite chest. She's still developing. And Itty Bitty Titty Committee is perfectly valid. Perfectly valid. But, so now she thinks he has this, like, preference for girls with big titties. So now she's super, like, self-conscious for no reason. Because then he's like, she's like, he's like, everything's okay. Like, I, I, like, without saying, I like you, he says, I like you. But he doesn't spell it out. They're both just stammering through this relationship that they don't even know is a relationship. But they're definitely doing something. 
And she even tricks him into, like, hanging out with him. Like, he gets there early. They go have, like, a little shopping date. And she tricks him into going on the date. The whole... And she basically tricks him into going on a date with her. And she treats it like a date. Even her face says, like, This is so great. I'm having so much fun. Oh, my gosh. She's like, I love it. She bought him mittens. Because she had gotten him a gift. And he hadn't got her anything. So... He didn't know what to get her because he's never really bought anyone a gift. He's never really had a lot of friends because he's such a I can't see you kind of person. But he also doesn't know what to get her because she's a girl. And she's a girl that talks to him and is nice to him. And so and it's like this whole relationship where they're trying to figure out how peopling works. But it's cute and got romantic overtones. But they're still stumbling through it like children. Not like preteens or like teenagers, they're stumbling through it like they have no idea what's going on. It doesn't feel overly sexualized. It just feels very cute and innocent and sweet and very slice of life as you go through their day to day. And I absolutely adore it. I'm following the series. It is so adorable. I, I love everything about it. This whole like an introvert that I can relate to with someone cute to make it like spicy. Ah. 10 of 10, recommend. So cute. Love it. It's adorable. Makes me blush. Beat red. So embarrassing. But it's worth it. It's worth the read. It's so good. I recommend. All right. So, this is volume one. Just kind of like a little overview. There's not like a major overarching storyline so far. It's mostly just like cute little scenes as they go day to day to day. So, it's just like a school day, I guess. But... Really cute. I will be reviewing other ones as I go. Um, tell me now. <laughs> let me know down in the comments below what you think of this. If you've read it, let me know how you liked it. If you think you're going to read it, let me know why. And if you think it sounds absolutely fucking dreadful, please tell me that too. <laughs> like this video if you liked it. Clearly. Um, and hey. Has anyone asked you if you subscribe to my channel? It's free. It's hard to get free things these days. So please feel free to subscribe. And if you would love to help me out and help me grow my channel, I'll have links down below to different promotion programs that I've got going on like Audible and 42 Lolita. Please feel free to use my links and codes and dip zippity doo -dah zippity doo day down below. Thank you so much, my Wicked Vipers, and I cannot wait to see you here next time. All right, have a wicked evening. Bye!